Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Justin with My Man Justin's Collectible Emporium, and I'm your man for Pokemon cards, card analysis, and Pokemon investment consulting. Today, I'm going to talk about metaphysics and Pokemon. And just to be clear, when I mention metaphysics, there might be some like connotations of new agey, mystical stuff, chanting, or something. Uh, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm just referring to concepts that cannot be understood objectively. Uh, they're things that can only be understood subjectively, like happiness. And with happiness, you can see someone being happy. You can even measure the chemicals that are released when someone is happy in, in someone's brain. But the idea of happiness in of itself, by itself, is something that is really only understood subjectively with our imaginations. So. In Pokemon, meta Pokemon metaphysics specifically deal with the realm of spheres of influence and the way that people cate categorize those spheres of influence and how they pursue, contend with, and eventually master the different spheres of influence in life. And back in medieval times, the way that people conceptualized these different spheres of influence was they called them spirits. Basically, they would have they believed that spirits governed over different aspects of reality and they would assign different spirits with different names to different aspects like geometry or the sciences or rhetoric which is speaking and that is how they understood these pursuits so like a sorcerer would be a someone who chose a specific aspect of reality and would summon it and then eventually command it and become a master over the sphere of influence of that spirit. And that, I think, is essentially the idea of what Pokemon is. But we can also see this in a really pragmatic, understandable view in modern times as well, psychologically. Because we see this with professionals in society as well. So when a professional uh, or when someone becomes a professional in something like engineering, right? They focus on a specific sphere of influence in society and they work toward it, they contend with it, they go through the journey of mastering it and eventually become a master of it and can then finally use it as something to benefit themselves and mankind on, on, uh, as a whole. And this is what we see with Ash in the Pokemon show. In the show, Ash leaves his parents' house to go out into the world to become an autonomous individual, to become a master of Pokemon. And what are Pokemon? Pokemon represent, they have major categories uh, such as psychic or fighting and they have specific subsets, like for example, Galurk is an automation Pokemon, and, and that's what Ash is doing. That, that's the journey of the Pokemon Master. It's like a similar to the, the Jungian hero, hero's journey. And he goes out into the world, he leaves his parents, he becomes an autonomous, um, autonomous individual to contend with all of these forces and spheres of influence in, in society and culture and life to become a master over them. And, and it's not like to dominate them. He wants to be competent over them. He wants to be able to contend with them and ascend through the ranks of competition. And we see this with the gym leaders. And each gym leader has a specific major broad uh, element in which they represent. Uh, like Sabrina is a psychic type so a uh, psychic type gym leader so she has uh, Pokemon that all represent different aspects of the mental life so when Ash gets to that gym the psychic gym he is contending with and becoming a master over the mental aspect of life and I think one of the most insightful lessons to glean from the Pokemon show is to be like Ash, and what Ash does is he embodies the hero. And what the hero does is that he doesn't 
completely invest himself in any of the specific Pokemon or spheres of influence in life, but he becomes a master over all of them, which means he becomes competent in dealing with all of them. He understands them and he can go through life um, with understandings of them, but he's still beholden to the greater ideal of the hero itself. And so we can see this just checking out the cards. And these are the Black and White Era Secret Rare Shinies. And with Gawler, like I said, he's an automation Pokemon. So he's in the sphere of the mind, Psychic, and he represents the subset of the, of, of the sphere of the mind of automation. And we can see this with professionals in society today. These are our engineers. These are people that contend with the spirit of Gawler. They decide to master it. They contend with um, the aspects of automation and now we see them becoming masters over it as we see with the rise of AI now and just all types of automation. And automation has been something that's been in our culture, uh, in, in culture itself for a really long time. When ATMs came out, that was a type of automation uh, and they replaced tellers at that time because you, you could do it all just from uh, innovation through these people that were mastering the art of automation. And what that did is it, it eventually made a whole new market of uh, people to replace those jobs with different jobs though. There was people that for repairing the automation machines and there was a whole new world of business consultants for people uh, since they didn't have they didn't need to do the more monotonous tasks of, of just um, depositing money and dealing with deposit checks, uh, more complex roles came out of society through this mastery. So that's Gawlerk. And then we have Garbodor. This is another um, specific aspect of the mental aspect of life, and it is a, a um, trash heap Pokemon. So this is a part of life that has to do with dealing with waste, and I, what comes to mind is um, garbage dumps, or or the act of um, preserving nature and, and being a good steward over it. So this is something to keep in check. So for people, and remember, th these things can be seen um, for every person to actually have some grasp of and to have some mastery over, or at least some competence over to be able to navigate through life in the most fruitful way, to kind of go on the, the journey that Ash is going on. And so with the, with the person that goes to master this to the full extent, they would uh, create new technology to deal with trash. Like I just heard a story about this guy that's develop, developing some, some technology to, to reduce the amount of waste in the oceans by like 50%. So hopefully that works out. Here next we have Reunclus, the shiny Reunclus, and this is the uh, multiplying Pokemon, so it resembles like a cell, and it's important to note too that uh, media texts, which and this is media, uh, it's a, it's a it's a form that communicates a message for people to interpret, and with this one you could interpret it as um, like a cell, and the aspect of life that that the life has to do with reproduction, like um, uh, populating the world with more people, and hopefully, you know, raising those people up to also be members of the earth that are good stewards of it, so that they contend with can contend with Garbodor. Um, this could also represent to someone else, someone else, uh, the process of evolution and how we went from a, a single-celled organism to more complex organisms, or just the idea from single celled from from uh, less complexity to increase complexity over time so there's definitely many ways to interpret it so any of you can also have your own ways to interpret it and here we have Terrakian this is the cavern Pokemon and this is a fighting type so this has to do with like the fighting spirit I would say and caverns are known to be places that are dark and dangerous um, they're usually you know in the earth and they they represent 
going to the unknown and, and exploring and, and finding new territory or going to places that you are scared of to be able to um, to deal with those fears and continue to move forward in life in the face of uncertainty. So that's that's another aspect of life that must be contended with for you know this kind of the the journey of, of the hero which which is what Ash is. He he represents the archetypal hero's journey. And I think that's one reason why we were all so drawn to the Pokemon show is that um, it's a it's a good archetype that people can embody and it represents so many good things like um, dealing with life in, in this sense where it's, there's so much different things to contend with and all these challenges and so much to learn um, the hero path is a very good one now here is the shiny hydragon and this has to do with the dark aspect of life and it's interesting is that the dark the dark side of life is something that's real and has to be contended with. Uh, it can't be ignored. And what Hydrogen represents is the brutal, the brutal aspect of life. And it's something that you know exists in people and has to be understood. You know, the dark side has to be understood because naivety can get people hurt. So that's part of this kind of the ashes uh, journey. To, to becoming a, a master over all of these spheres of influence and elements of life is that he has to also deal with the Hydreigon, which is, stands for brutality. And it's something to be aware of, to be cautious of, and, and even possibly to be aware of in oneself and to keep at bay and not let it get too out of hand. Here's another Pokemon representing the dark side of life, the crocodile, and the crocodile represents the uh, intimidation. So this is something that can be interpreted in, interpreted in several ways, like dealing with people that try to intimidate you, understanding intimidation, and also to not use it um, for the sake of maybe uh, taking advantage of people that are weaker than you. So this is something where if you only pursued this, like if you really made this your highest ideal rather than just to be the hero, because the hero I think is the major archetype and these are all subsets to it. But you know, maybe what some people do is they make the crocodile their ideal or, or even um, the Terrakian their major ideal and they're only concerned with exploring and they miss out on understanding and contending with all of the Pokemon. And so with this one, we have intimidation, which is just another dark side of reality that must be understood, contended with, and to be cautious of, and not to let go, go out of control in oneself. And here is a grass type, or maybe you could call it earth type, or nature, uh, natural nature. And, that, and this is the regal Pokemon. This is the shiny superior. And regality has to do with um, nice things in life, you know, the nice furniture, French cuisine, maybe you could say, the, the really delicate, exquisite food that is enjoyed by people that maybe do a good job at mastering the other aspects of life. And uh, the reality is something to be enjoyed as, as an aspect of life. And this is another thing that can be pursued above everything else, above being the hero, and someone only cares about these kind of earthly things and makes their whole life about just pleasure and enjoying the nicest stuff and all they care about is having the nicest car and the nicest furniture but other aspects of their life would suffer in that case and that's what Sup superior represents and here we have our chaos and this is the first bird pokemon so this one's a little more obscure it's a fighting type and the first bird can represent a few things. It can represent, well, since it's kind of a dinosaur uh, looking Pokemon, it can represent the, the state of things before catastrophes and the ability to adapt to change over time or through catastrophes. Um, so that's, that, that's one way to interpret it. Like I said, there's gonna be individual ways to uh, 
interpret media text like this. And that's the shiny Archaeops. This is just kind of an experimental video. Maybe I'll do some more like this in the future. But for, for now, that, that, that was just the kind of the main theme of this video is just to analyze the Pokemon hobby and the show and the media of the cards under the frameworks of metaphysics and media analysis. So I hope you appreciated that and um, that you also try to embody the hero as you go out into the world so that you too can master and be competent of all of the spheres of influence in life and to not let them dominate you but to be able to contend with them as you travel through your journey ascending through life.